Russ, Dwight Howard, Trevor Ariza, Wayne Allington, Kent Bazemore. We welcome in ESPN NBA insider Ramona <laughs> Shelburne. LA native, what are your thoughts Woo. on what the Lakers strategy now that we are seeing it pan out? Well, right you now? know what's amazing, Rach, is I was in the parking lot. <laughs> like this is back when we used to do stakeouts. Remember when right? free agency was you staked out yes. the meetings and everybody actually used to they used to have that's, meetings. Well, that's before everybody constantly <laughs> yeah. IG storied and tweeted right? where they were at every moment. You don't have to stake any players out now. They'll just tell you. Yeah. <laughs> and it was it was amazing because the Lakers really thought they had a chance with Melo back in 2014. That was a big moment. And they got really close. The, the only Trump car was Phil Jackson was the president of the Knicks back then. And he had the fifth year and he gave him the, the whole thing. But mm -hmm. they, they really thought they had a chance at Carmelo Anthony all those years later. And you look at I, I mean, that's my favorite expression on the show, I guess, is sliding doors. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, but the sliding doors of Melo's career, of LeBron's career. Um, I like this fit. I like that Melo sort of re restarted his career and, and he's become a really good three-point shooter career mm -hmm. high 41 percent last yeah. year that's what the lakers need and and I, their cumulative ages are getting up mm -hmm. <laughs> like he will be there and to make lebron not feel old i guess like he's a little bit older than lebron wow. here um but look i love i love the fact that they got mellow and malik monk mm -hmm. and malik monk on a minimum i was gonna say that is that is some wizardry yeah. and also kind of speaks mm. to a strategy we were talking about with chris bosh yesterday that when he and LeBron and Dwayne Wade were down in Miami, they were able to yeah. be like, hey, come to Miami. Yeah. Miami's fun. I know you won't be making that much money, but come and be with us. This yeah. is going to be a party. And it seems like they are starting to pick up a little bit of that momentum, too. What do you think, Zach? Uh, look, my big question about the Lakers now is the burden on defense for LeBron, who is still <laughs> incredible defensively, and Anthony Davis, who we all know is a defense yep. player of the year candidate, mm -hmm. is getting bigger and bigger and bigger because when you trawl the minimum bin for guys like this, they're older, mm -hmm. their liabilities defensively. But Melo, to Ramona's point, has bought into a spot-up shooting role and been really, really good at it, and he's going to fit well next to LeBron. And Malik Monk, look, he's not going to get the headlines here because this is Carmelo Anthony. This is a top-10 all-time scorer, first ballot Hall-of-Famer, LeBron's friend from when they were teenagers. It's a huge deal that they're playing together. Malik Monk on the minimum is an incredible get for Rob Polinka in the Lakers. Mm -hmm. He had a great year last year, and he's not just a shooter. He can get them moving in transition. He's really fast. We know the Lakers like to play in transition, doubly so with Russ now. They're yep. getting rebounds and rampaging up the court, and he's a really good secondary playmaker. If you, Not really good, but he's getting there. If you kick it to Malik Monk on the weak side against the closeout, he can attack it, make yep. the next pass. I think this is a great, great say. It's not going to get the headlines, but this is a great signing for the Lakers. Perk, I'm curious what you think the on-court fit yeah. with Melo, with LeBron, AD, and just all these new pieces, because it's great to make wholesale changes to your roster if you think you're improving it. But as you see on that graphic we just showed, Perk, it's a lot of guys going out and a lot of new guys coming in, and you're going to need to sort of reset your culture just by definition of having an almost completely new group except for two or three key guys. Yeah, and, and I understand that, Rachel, and I would be concerned if it was a young group, but we're talking about a group of veterans, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of these guys have been to, to, the, to the promised land. A lot of these guys have won championships. LeBron James, Anthony Davis, uh, uh, um, you're looking at even Trevor Ariza. But when you look at Carmelo Anthony and you look at Russell Westbrook, these guys are starving to win a championship. That's the only thing left yeah. for them to complete their legacy is to win a ring. So sacrificing is not going to be difficult when it comes down to the Los Angeles Lakers. Look, we're watching Space Jam in real life right now. <laughs> the Lakers have five Hall of Famers on their team. Five. Russell Westbrook, Anthony Davis, LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony, and Dwight Howard. And all those guys still could contribute at a very high level on the basketball court. Dwight Howard, to me, is going to be, again, the unsung hero in this situation, in my opinion, because his ability to still protect the basket. He knows how to play alongside Anthony Davis. He's still a live threat at the <laughs> basket, one of the most athletic bigs in the game today. So when you look at the other pieces, the shooting that they added around them, watch the hell out. 
Yeah, I love this Dwight Howard sign. Resigning, re resigning. Re re yeah, I mean, uh, they missed him last year. That was a calculated decision that they made to go for Mark Saul in the in there and, and let Dwight go and and trade Travail. Uh, they missed it, and they missed it against Nicole Jokic. They missed it against DeAndre Ayton, who, by the way, is now a guy that you have to be thinking about how are you going to defend him. Um, and so I think they just looked at what happened last year in the playoffs and said, we gotta we gotta get a defensive big who can take that. In those in those matchups against Phoenix, against Utah with Rudy Gobert, and against and against Denver with with Jokic, and I think that's Dwight. He was and great I, in those. And those I series. think the follow up question to that is, the more they play Dwight, the more they're going to face the problem of Russ, LeBron, yep. AD, Dwight on the floor at the same time is just mm -hmm. not a lot of shooting around LeBron, and so that will be interesting to see what it does to their half court offense. But this team does like to play big. And as much as we want to see Anthony Davis the center, Anthony Davis the center, they're going to buy minutes yes. with Dwight yep. at the five. It's just a matter of how they balance out the rotation because their shooting has taken a hit. And for 15 years, we've seen LeBron plus shooting is unstoppable. Yeah. And look, here are some shooting numbers of guys last season. Caldwell Pope, not going to be there anymore. Caruso, not going to be there anymore. McLemore, not signed right now. Kyle Kuzma, not going to mm -hmm. be there anymore. So you've got a lot of these guns no longer at your disposal. And the age thing is real, guys. They've got six signed players right now, seven if you count Russ, right, who is on his way. Um, six of those seven are age 32 or older. A chunk of them are over 35. I mean, there is no question this is an older team. And I do think you're right, Perk. Much like we were talking in the last segment about the Olympics, you have a bunch of vet guys. You put them together for long enough. They do eventually figure it out. And the idea of sacrificing to win a championship that is more real the older you get. Yep. It is real that you stop worrying as much about your individual numbers. It is real that you can feel like, well, I've kind of done everything else yep. already. So for a guy like Melo that's looking for his first ring, that is very meaningful in terms of what you are willing to do for the team. But we have been talking so much this past season about injuries. And yes, obviously, all the games stuffed in there because of COVID, all of that kind of stuff has made a difference. But if you look at the actual injury numbers, mm -hmm. they're not that far off. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.